We covered the works of Leo Perutz in episode 143. Today we will review the last novel he published during his life, the 1953 Nachts unter der Steinernen Brücke, or Nights Under the Stone Bridge. Peretz began writing the novel in 1924 and only finished in 1951 in Tel Aviv. The novel takes place over many years, from some time before 1575 to 1620, and focuses on Prague, its Jewish population and alchemist King Emperor Rudolf II. The book seems to be a collection of stories, but when seen as such, some of these stories will seem anemic and too short, because the full context may only appear halfway into the book. The story in broad strokes narrates the childhood rise and death of Mordecai Meisel, the richest man in the kingdom. We see him as a child, paying a clothes pawnbroker to rifle through pawned clothes and to keep whatever he finds there, and one day he finds a gold coin that Rudolf II stole from a hoard held by two demonic spirits. He uses this money to start his fortune, and the prince and future emperor sees him find it. Rudolf had thrown the coin away, as it gave him immense bad luck, but kept following its path to ensure it would come into the hands of the one whom the demon spirit said it belonged to, a man named Mordecai Meisel. In later stories, we see the story of how the great rabbi Louis used his cabalistic powers to save the emperor's life, causing the great angels to have a very large punch-up over the resulting imbalance in their realm. The emperor rewards Louis by saying he must help him find a woman he saw in the Jewish city in Prague, or he will expel all Jews from Bohemia. This makes the rabbi force the woman Esther to come to Rudolf in dreams, and this results in the Black Plague scourging the Jewish city. Dead children summoned by fiddle music in the graveyard confirm that adultery is the crime for which so many are dying in the city. For you see, Esther is the wife of Mordecai Meisel. The rabbi is forced to cause her death, despite her having nothing to do with his decisions. This deeply scars Meisel, and has him mourn her death for decades. The book also features stories of men not affiliated with Meisel or the Jewish city, such as the story of the abduction and great good fortune of Albrecht von Wallenstein, who was abducted to be the lover of the very rich and lovely woman from next door, and thus finds fortune for his future military career, or the story of a forgotten alchemist whom Rudolf does not even want to have pursued after he runs away when he is unable to make gold for him. Rudolf doesn't even want him punished, and so he kills himself, and the story of an eccentric painter shunning fame who runs off before the emperor can make him rich by buying his paintings to go die of the plague. Finally, at the end, Mordecai discovers the truth of who his wife Esther was calling on her deathbed, so he decides to cheat the Emperor from the half of his immense fortune he promised him by wasting all of it. The fantastic element is abundant, from summoning dead spirits in the graveyard, to spirits of the dead calling out the names of those who are to die in the coming year, to the story of a man who went mad waiting to be hanged for buying a coat, when he found out what the two dogs who were to be hanged with him were saying, or the story of a man who said he caused the victory of the Catholic anti-reformation forces at the Battle of White Mountain by eating some of the Emperor's food. The story, while scatterbrained at first, does come together in the end. The stories do jump back and forth in time a lot, so one may feel a bit lost. 